The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com. My name is Chelsea and my whole life is falling apart. Notice she's reaching out for help. My mom is a totally depressed person and I really hate it. She does nothing but work, come home, and fall asleep. Notice when a parent doesn't have any personal life, any important values in his or her own life, it sends the child a message that life is drudgery. Now this isn't living, it's existing. And you don't want to send your kids that message. Chelsea continues, My dad has never been there for me or my brother. Dad puts on a show for outsiders, pretending that he is such a great dad. I hate him so much that when I get married, I will not walk down the aisle with him. Now, notice as a dad or as a parent, if you put on a show for outsiders, but you know behind closed doors in your own in the privacy of your own home, you're not a good parent, then your parenting is just a big fraud. And you're not fooling yourself. And that's the most important person. You know you're not a good person, a good parent, even if you can pretend to the rest of the world that you are. Now let's get into the meat of what's bothering Chelsea. Um, Look at her choices. She says, I've had sex. I've lied to my family and friends. I've been arrested for possession of drugs. I lost all my friends after this arrest. I've run away from school. I've dropped out of school. I've run away, excuse me, I've run away and I've dropped out of school. I've been locked up for trying to kill myself. Look at her series of choices. My mom moved me out of our home into an apartment complex with all old people. I sit in my apartment all day long and do nothing. Remember, that's what she didn't like that her mom did. I am so lonely and I hate myself. I'm afraid to die. The earth hurts so much. I've lost all my dreams. Now I'm struggling to complete night school. I'm about to be 17 years old, and I don't have my driver's license. I can't afford it. I have no money. Chelsea. Now, what advice would you give her? Well, I would say I'm... Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad, and then Alan will be back. Romance. Oh, I wish guys knew more about what we want from a relationship. Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Ah, here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance. A serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Hmm, The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. I'm about to be 17 years old, and I don't have my driver's license. I can't afford it. I have no money. Chelsea. Now, what advice would you give her? Well, I would say immediately try to get some therapy, ASAP. I would call your local psychological association, which you can look up in the phone book, and find out where you can get some help for free. Universities such as Brown University is running a depression study for teens. So you could get free cognitive therapy there, which is tremendous cognitive therapy if you lived in Rhode Island. There are teaching universities in all states, so you want to try to find out if there are any near you. And some will offer the therapy on a sliding scale. Some are trying to train counselors or therapists, so they'll teach you. It may not be a study that you're in, but it may be a training situation. Now, the most important thing that you said is that you've lost all your dreams. Don't ever do that. Don't ever, ever, ever give up on yourself. Because when you give up your personal goals, a driver's license or having decent friends or finishing school or having a career that you'd enjoy, you do give up your desire to live when you give those up. The most profound value you have is your own character. And that's what will make you happy or make you feel tremendously guilty if you betray it and you've betrayed yourself. Now, that doesn't mean you can't turn your life around. You're young. Imagine if you could look at fast forward 10 years from now and look at what your life could look right if you change your choices right now. Picture a Chelsea dressed nicely having a job, let's say as a hostess in a decent restaurant, and you've worked hard to earn your high school equivalency. And you remember when you made the decision not to sit home all day in this old age place, but to 
take a low paying job that allowed you to earn enough to get a dry to get driver's training and you have your license you've had it for several years now again this is projecting 10 years forward you have a small car it's a used car but it works you have an apartment a small apartment you have a few good friends and you don't lie to them and you're dating a nice man those are your dreams that's your life now instead of asking yourself or expecting someone else to rescue you, take charge of your life. Attend night school. Look for a friend. Make sure you don't make those same self-defeating choices. Learn how to be honest with yourself. Get out and get a, get do some sort of work now. Remember, there are no shortcuts to good character. You can't fool yourself. And I recommend a book, Choosing to Live, that's on my website, drkenner.com. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. Before, but... Never anything this serious. I really feel terrible having her mad at me. It's times like this, I wish I knew how to cry. Well, don't be embarrassed on my account, Niles. No, no, it's not that. I'm just not someone who cries. It's not in my nature. When Maris's uncle Lyle died, I had to shut my hand in the car door just to make a decent showing at the funeral. And notice, you can't fake your feelings. If you didn't miss Maris's uncle when he died, or if you didn't even like him... You can't well up tears. I mean, you just don't feel it, and you don't want to ever fake your feelings that way. But there's another problem with this, too. This is obviously Niles from Frasier. Uh, There's another problem in that many times men are taught not to cry. It's not macho. It's not cool to cry. And yet they experience the same losses, the same types of pain that would cause them to want to cry. And what do they do? Some of them get angry. Some of them just withdraw. Some of them emotionally just close up and they don't allow themselves to fail and it ricochets through their whole personality. You don't want to do that to yourself. If you're a guy and something really bad happens, it doesn't mean you have to bawl your eyes out in public, just like it doesn't mean you have to if you're a woman. But you can do it in private. You can let yourself experience the emotions in their depth because that's you. That's truly what's going on within you, and why try to fake it? Why try to put on a front to yourself and to the world? For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com, and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner. The ideal goal in evaluating a potential romantic partner is to discover a harmony between your emotional response and your rational appraisal. If there is any conflict between the two, it will feel like a red flag. Treat all red flags as a signal to clarify and resolve any confusion and doubt you may have before making decisions about something as important as marriage. If you consider your partner to be a fine person and yet feel nothing emotionally, this will not work romantically, nor will it work if you feel a strong emotional response, yet conclude consciously that the person is of low character or a poor match for you. You want a strong emotional bond that agrees fully with your rational judgment of the person. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com, and you can buy the book at amazon.com. 